that policy. This ordinance provides that for the Board of Supervisors, as well as other boards that operate within the general umbrella of um, Bonnetsaw County, including the School Board, Planning Commission, BZA, Board of Equalization, and the Economic Development Authority Board of Directors, can hold electronic meetings um, provided that they meet certain requirements, such as having public notice, um, plenty of opportunity for the public to uh, participate electronically and provide uh, information and comments before at, and during the meeting. And it also provides for extension of timelines uh, in the event that it becomes necessary. And for instance, uh, zoning permits, subdivision plans, site plans, erosion sediment control plans, and those sorts of things uh, typically have a 60 to 90 day deadline in order to complete them. And if for whatever reason it becomes impossible to do that because staff, for instance, can't come to the office in order to sign wet signatures, allows for extensions of deadlines for that. It also allows extensions for deadlines for public hearings in order to um, allow basically the chairs of the different commissions and bodies to try to schedule those meetings in the manner and at the time and place where it would be the safest based upon uh, the latest information from um, the Virginia Department of Health. Um, Any other speaker forms? Finally, I do want to note that this is an emergency ordinance. Uh, we're allowed to meet on an emergency basis uh, pursuant to Virginia Code Section 2.2-3708.2, subsection A3. However, this ordinance will need to be advertised and readopted within 60 days hereafter. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to mention to you, Mr. Chairman, is that it's considered likely that this Wednesday the General Assembly is going to adopt guidelines applicable to all public bodies in the Commonwealth to provide for electronic meetings under similar procedures. Uh, and I hope to be able to report to you about those at your regular meeting next Tuesday. Great. Is that it? That's it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any questions from the members of the board? No, sir. Uh, but I would like to move for adoption if there's no other questions. Okay, we have a motion to adopt this right here. Second. Second. Okay, uh, any questions? All in favor, say aye. 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 Vote no. Okay, we will post the language of the motion online for the public to review. This uh, Board of Supervisors meeting is being conducted pursuant to and in compliance with the emergency ordinance to effectuate temporary changes and certain deadlines and to modify public meetings and public hearing practices and procedures to address the continuity of operations associated with the pandemic disaster. The Bonnetown County Board of Supervisors are all present at this meeting. Now, before we get started with the presentations and the hearings, I wanted to review the process that we will use. The presentations for tonight are posted on the county's budget website. If you go to the Bonnetown County homepage and visit the Your Government menu, you can then click on the budget webpage for the presentation. For each of the three public hearings tonight, I will open the public hearing and take comments from those present at Greenfield first. Citizens interested in speaking should go to room 226 on the upper floor and wait their turn to speak. And after those present speak, we will receive comments from those of you who are listening on the telephone. I will provide exact instructions during each hearing for making the comments. If, for some reason, a virtual meeting system fails during the meeting, we will work to reboot and get back online the next quarter hour. The phone number and the code will not change and can be dialed into at any time. Are there any questions or comments from the other board members? No, sir. 
Okay, if not, then we will now have a presentation regarding the effective tax rate due to the 2020 reassessment from uh, Mr. Cody Sexton. Mr. Sexton, are you there? Yes, but I'm working to put the presentation up now. Okay. All right, board members, can you see the presentation? Yes. 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 All right. Thank you very, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman, and the rest of the board members. Uh, tonight, the first public hearing that you all will be holding is a hearing on the effective tax rate as a result of the reassessment that was conducted last year and will be effective in 2020. So the Code of Virginia stipulates that a separate public hearing has to be held after a general reassessment before setting the tax rate. So as you will notice in the agenda tonight, the, the public hearing is set at 7 p.m. at a separate time from the budget hearing, which will be later in the meeting at 7.15 or sometime thereafter. So the Code of Virginia stipulates that requirement, and it also provides uh, direct instructions on how the hearing needs to be held and advertised based on the impact of the reassessment. So the reassessment uh, impact this year necessitated this hearing, and as a result, that impact, uh, we're advertising a rate of 79 cents per $100 evaluation. That rate was first adopted in 2016, and the board is proposing no increase above that current rate. So if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, otherwise, I will turn the control back over and you can open the public hearing. All right, any uh, questions from the members of the board? Well, if not, then we will, we will now open the public hearing for effective tax rate due to the uh, 2020 reassessment. Before making your comments, please state your name and your address. And first, comments will be heard from those that are present in Greenfield. And if there's anyone who has comments, please go to room 226. Uh, we will allow three minutes to speak. The first one I have here is Kerry Martell. Are we at room 226? Kerry Martell. The next person in line is, uh, to speak is uh, Mr. Walter Michael. Not, so if you'll be ready when she uh, gets through making her comment, uh, we can move right along. Jerry Martell and Room 226.
$300,000 in local grant funds to the Dale YMCA. I can't afford to join that. I don't know why my tax dollars are supporting that. And that's a third year of a 10 year commitment, which my property tax value and assessment will contribute to the revenue for supporting that. Um, $650,000 for multi purpose community facility and another facility at the CS Conference Center. Um, building and endeavors that should be on a ballot referendum, not in a board meeting. Um, based on these projections, I just don't think that it's right for a uh, county to be taking more of our tax money, more money to taxes. Um, <clears throat> my response to the hearing is that I pro propose a reduction in the real estate tax rate to the end result of the elimination of this extortive tax not a maintenance of the status quo of the United States. And for me, because of the assessed value this year, that's actually a tax hike, a, a hike due to value increase and the right thing to pay. That's what you choose to do. Um, no amount of verbal machination can change the fact that my tax money will be increasing. Um, so I just don't think that it's right for you to be taking more of our property tax and we're all cutting our budget and trying to economize our own personal budget. Uh, so basically, we don't keep the same, reduce it, and eliminate it eventually. Thank you. Thank you, Mark Hill. Is Mr. Walter Michaels in the room? I'm here. Uh, give us your name and address if you would. My name is Walter Michael, 1215 Archway Road, Blue Ridge, Virginia, 24064. <clears throat> On February 4, 2020, due to the large increase in real estate property assessments, we asked to have Boston County real estate tax rate reduced to 70 cents per hundred of evaluation from the current 79 cents per hundred. I was somewhat heartened when I read in the Fifth Capital Herald on March 18th of this year, that you were considering lowering the tax rate to 72 cents per hundred. I do not have a problem with the 7 cent reduction from the current 79 cents per hundred to 72 cents per hundred. However, since the assessment on my house went up 17.94%, while others less than three miles away from me went up only 4.7%. I believe that the 70 cents per hundred evaluation is reasonable. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else that wants to speak on the real estate tax? Yes. Yeah. Okay, if not, I'll close. I'll close the public specific. I put my paperwork in. I'm not sure why you didn't get it. The money is here. Here Terry Rockley, 4519, Catawba Road. She had it listed. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, it's a problem. That's okay. Um, I am really having a problem with this because my property taxes went up 35%. Uh, it wasn't just two or three months ago that Mr. Martin was all over the airways in Roanoke County, City, and Bonifat County saying how wonderful Bonifat County was doing financially. So I'm not sure why this is coming up as far as why you need to have a tax increase. The bottom line is you all work for us. We are the taxpayers who pay your salary. And the bottom line to that is, is that you guys really need to start listening to your constituents in the county. And to do that, it would be helpful if you could hold the Board of Supervisor meetings at 6 o'clock at night so that the tax-paying citizens of this county know exactly what's going on. Nobody knows what's going on, and here you are trying to pass a big tax increase when we're in freaking lockdown. I mean, it is ridiculous what you guys are trying to do. And I don't want to you know, and for the fact that we're doing this through a screen. It, it, it's just insane. You know, we need to open our county back up. We need to get people working to pay the taxes. I mean, how in the world do you propose putting a tax increase in when you've got the county shut down? That is unexcusable. Totally unexcusable. 
much usable. And if you want to hoard tax dollars, go out and get businesses to come in here and bring jobs to the county and stop coming after the residents of this county. Now that's what I have to say. Thanks. Thank you.
on the broad base of FOFA. I'm going to ask that you reduce the proposed budget for the following reasons. Because of the pandemic and the governor's shutdown order, Bonkai citizens have been hard going through an unprecedented hardship. The only people who haven't lost their jobs are working at a reduced rate are Bonkai County employees. Property values have been negatively impacted and now worth less than when they were reassessed. It's time that the county administration and administrators take that into account and reduce the budget and stop all unnecessary spending. According to the, and, and that would be limited to police, fire, and protection, which is your basic um, services that the county should be offering the citizens along with and keeping up the county assets instead of getting into uh, 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 developing uh, it's taking money from the citizens for the purpose of developing hasn't worked and that's the reason we've had two tax increases to make up for it gentlemen three of you ran as republicans and you know the republican creed i think it's that the citizens expect that to be held to now i want to thank billy martin for standing with these citizens in the county in the past to hold back on taxes and spending. And I know most of the rest of it. Uh, and I think it's time that we put the citizens of the county first. And uh, the things that the administration wants to do, second. And in closing, I'm expecting the citizens citizens to uh, expect the citizens to suffer more just to give an increase and, and, and do some of the things that you all think want to happen is not a good reason for, for the citizens to be put in further hardship than they are right now. I want to thank you all and I hope you will take that heart. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Larry Chola, I live at 378 Borden Run Road, Newcastle, Virginia. Mr. Chairman and Supervisors, I uh, wouldn't want to be in your seat right now, uh, but I don't know. This uh, situation we have going on, not only in the county, but also in the state and the country, I thought about all week about what to say to you guys might actually mean something. And I can't think of anything other than I'm going to tell you what means something to me. I've spent almost 40 years of my life, actually 40 more years, 40, more than 40 years of my life, building a business that uh, I never dreamed I would be in a state financially that uh, it looks like I may very well be in very soon. Uh, business is down over 31 percent as of today in my business. That doesn't sound like a lot, except when you factor when you factor in the fact that it doesn't have a lot of profit to start with in the automotive business. I have uh, nine employees. Out of those nine employees, there are 32 other people, family members, children that depend on their incomes. Have 9,500 plus customers that are active. That kind of count on me being there for a little bit of service farm. The, uh, the amount of downturn that I've seen in business here in just a few weeks, if it continues for long, there's going to be a lot of automotive businesses, and that's really the only thing I know about is automotive, that it won't be around. Um, they'll be lucky to survive. Now, some of us, maybe even me, I don't know, might have qualify for some PPP money, but that remains to be seen. Doesn't sound real good. If it doesn't come through, then I'd say that's pretty much going to be the, the nail in the coffin. Um, and the county with a nice big empty blue building down there to figure out some way to get taxes out of. But uh, some of you come from business backgrounds, I know. 
And all I can tell you is, you know, you got to do what you got to do here, but uh, you really need to think about how many businesses in this county probably will not be back in a month if this continues much longer. I already have had two family members, one of which I'll informed up today, that have lost their jobs because of businesses that closed, one up here in Bobcat County, one in Roanoke. Um, for the time being, I've had to cut my employees' hours, which they didn't particularly like, but they all understand it's better than being laid off and not having a job. But uh, any idea whatsoever of increasing revenue in any form, in any way you want to call it at this time, I think would be very bad. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Do we have anyone else in the room 226 that wants to speak? Uh, at this time, yes, sir. Okay, do we have anyone on the telephone? If we do, we'll have comments from those who are on the phone. We ask that you please press five star on your phone to indicate that you have a comment. When your phone is unmuted, please take your name and address and proceed with your comment. And please ensure that you're in a quiet location with no background noises to allow your comments to be clearly heard. You'll have three minutes to speak. Do we have anyone on the phone? Hit five star. We have one person. I'm going to unmute that person right now. Okay, thank you. Hi, my name is Lori Dean. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Um, I live at 161 Moore Valley Drive, which is in Summer's Beach Subdivision. Um, obviously, uh, I mean, we'll talk about the tax rate, but of course, like another gentleman said, it's going to go hand in hand for budget. But I received a new assessment. Um, on our value of our house, which is a 21-year-old home that went up 11%, which equates to $138.71 for the fit. The house had the original room, kitchen, and bathroom. Of course, I'm a CPA, so immediately I conducted a market analysis of the last nine houses that sold in our neighborhood. That was from 518-19 to 319-2020. The average selling price of those homes was $120.86 for the fit. Obviously, a big difference from what you um, say the, the appraiser was the appraiser our house for. Uh, the most recent house that sold in our neighborhood was on March 19th, and it was listed for $114.23 for the foot. The GIS was something that they did us tonight to get the actual selling price. I would say it probably came in a little bit, but still significantly less than what you all can assist our house for. Um, so on March 27th, I went to the appeals and met with Gary Inc. I gave him all of the market research data, and he said he would review it. A few weeks later, I received the revised value, which it dropped it from 11% increase down to a 5% increase, but still the price per square foot was $131.68 a square foot. Still way too high. Um, this last assessment is still overstated. Our house is not fairly valued at fair market value. And as you know, fair market value is what someone is willing to pay for something. And based on what we sell in this neighborhood, um, for their light kind of homes in, in, in the same year, um, we will way and still out of all work. Um, if I the other bottom line county residents would conduct this study, but did conduct the study, I'm told that they were find that their houses were not fair fair market value. And um, in conclusion of this basis a topic, the homes were valued in excess of fair market value. Bottom County needs to take a tax reduction more than what's proposed to correct this problem. Uh, valuing homes in excess of fair market value is unethical and it needs to be corrected. Um, and then a side note, I'm just curious. What if, I'd like to know whatever happened to Ballard Point, all the tax incentives that were given to them, and then they left you. Uh, I would hope that that money is going to come back into the budget. Uh, so I, I may get in touch with Cody Sexton on this, because he and I had conversations about uh, you all conducting this meeting during a, a quarantine situation. Actually, I actually contacted the governor's office about it. But, um, I'd like to be interested in know what happened to the cost of money. That's a lot of money that went out. You know, you guys lost real estate, um, you know, real tax, and um, 
this point in time, that can come back in and finish up to the tax credit. Uh, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you for calling in. We appreciate that. Uh -huh. <laughs> Okay. Good evening. This is Beth Leffel of 591 Me, Eagle Rock, Virginia. Can everybody hear me okay? Uh, can you speak up just a little bit? Sure. Beth Leffel, 591 Leffel Lane, Eagle Rock, Virginia. I'd like to thank you all for providing this format to allow public comment on the proposed tax increase while we're trying to practice social distancing due to the pandemic. And I, like many other people, am asking that you consider not increasing the property tax levies this year. Tonight, I've, I've heard you all listen to a lot of people who gave ample examples of the financial hardship that have been brought on by the pandemic. I also know that a couple of you have business backgrounds and you're well aware of the general economic recession we're facing. So I just wanted to offer a statistic that we aren't constantly hearing in the news. In 2020, the cost of living increase in Social Security benefits was 1.6%, less than 2%. The Woodcock County U.S. Census projections estimated that in 2019, our county had 23% population over the age of 65. So if we think about that for just a moment, a quarter of our county population must exist on a 1.6% raise, and the county is not considering effectively raising taxes by 10 to 30%. If you look at the real numbers, it's not the average. I think it's unfair to expect that people are going to be able to keep up with that sort of tax increase. If you increase the average tax by 10%, it comes across as being greedy, considering the obvious economic hardship that a lot of people are facing right now. And I just wonder if you're ready to justify this to the constituents, what services are going to be increasing to defend a 7% increase in the county budget. I, I know from past experience that generally the school systems are pressured very hard to submit flat budgets, and the tiniest increase is scrutinized heavily. Perhaps the Board of Supervisors can internalize that scrutiny and find a way to flatline this budget instead of increasing it by $4.6 million. I think with the 27, approximately $27 million the county has in federal reserve, that perhaps you could hold steady for a year and give citizens a break on the property tax. I have to consider a compromise between cutting the tax rate all the way back to 72 cents, which would keep it flat, but pick something in the middle that doesn't raise it up to the 10% increase. If you decrease the tax rate by only three and a half cents, it would give the county revenue to keep up the services we need in the country, but it would also give people a break on their tax credit. Thank you for your public service and consideration of our public comments on this issue. Thank you, Ms. Level. Do we have anyone else waiting on the phone? Okay, do we have anyone else who wants to speak on the, uh, the assessment? Or the tax rate? Okay, if not, I'll close the public hearing and then we will have a budget overview presentation for Mr. Tony Zarella, Director of Finance. Mr. Zarella. Okay. Uh, good evening. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, yes. Can you speak up just a little? Sure. Uh, waiting on uh, Cody Sexton to uh, set up the presentation. Here we go. Okay, uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, fellow staff, citizens of Greenfield, uh, and others uh, listening in. Uh, I'll start with the uh, budget overview. Uh, just to note, uh, the FY21 budget is the same as advertised on April 8th. Uh, components of the budget in this presentation are as follows a major budget consideration of revenues and expenditures. 
five major categories, capital improvement projects, uh, the impact of COVID-19, and anticipated schedule of remaining budget meetings. Next. Okay, in terms of considerations, uh, key elements of the FY21 budget included in this budget funding for county school division, funding for county facility needs, funding for capital projects for both the county and the school, personnel additions, uh, compensation adjustments, use of fund balance for one-time projects, no tax rate increase included in the budget, uh, no COLA increase in the county budget, for employees and uh, lending consideration to the potential negative impact of COVID-19 when we appropriate the FY21 budget. Uh, as everyone knows, COVID-19 is an evolving issue uh, with no historical base means at this time of forecasting its economic impacts. Next. In terms of uh, projected revenues, general fund, Resources, you see the breakdown there, 58 million, 11 million, and 1 million, local, state, and federal. General fund total, 70.9 million, or a 4.6 million dollar increase. Use of fund balance, uh, 1.4 million for one-time expenditures. Capital in nature. School fund revenue is 34.5 million dollars. That is school-oriented generated revenues for other state, federal, self-sustaining, school nutrition funds, and the like. And they show a decrease, a slight decrease of $200,000 when you add up all of those components. All revenues, grand total, $106.8 million, or a $5.8 million increase. Next. Speaking of local revenues, uh, for FY21, it's a $4.5 million increase. It includes the impact of the real estate reassessment and projected real growth, uh, continued growth in some other areas, including personal property taxes, public service corporation taxes, and growth of machinery and tools taxes, the meals, and other local taxes. However, it includes a decrease in building permit revenues versus FY20 budget, and a decrease in earnings on deposits and investments uh, due to a decrease in the rates of return. And as we know, uh, we're figuring that projected revenue growth may be impacted by COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, and this is going to be based on the duration of the event, the time and degree of the bounce back uh, from the pandemic events. Uh, the the COVID-19 factors are not included in the budget at this time, with the exception of consideration uh, of the way that we appropriate the budget um, for FY21. Next. State revenues, uh, only a $300,000 increase, and that's because the uh, the first and fifth bullets, uh, they are budgeted relatively flat, and they typically are flat unless the state tends to do something, if they do something for the compensation board funding. A decrease in grants, increase in welfare reimbursements due to social services activity, and an increase in CSA reimbursements due primarily to an increase in foster care activity. Federal revenue is a very small increase. The county simply does not have uh, many federal revenue sources. Uh, there's a decrease in an interest rate subsidy that was scheduled. Increase in federal welfare receipts having to do again with social services activity and a slight increase in projected payments in lieu of taxes. Next. <clears throat> projected expenditures, uh, general fund, $39.2 million that's for operations, community organizations, capital improvement projects, and EDA transfers. Debt service, $5.2 million, or an increase of $564,000, and this increase is related to an increase in school-related debt uh, for uh, Colonial Elementary School. School fund, $61.8 million. That is with all school funds, county contribution, and total operating costs are considered, $61.8 million. There's also a CIP funding element or component of $1.4 million. 
Oil expenditures, $106.8 million, or a $5.8 million increase. Next. Here you see the contribution components of the expenditures. It's very, very similar to FY20. Uh, a 1% increase in funding in, in funding in combination of transfers from the general fund and the school fund operations from direct revenue. That's a one percentage increase compared to FY20. Small, small proportional uh, decrease in some of the other components that you see that is currently at less than 1%. Next. In terms of projected expenditures, you know, with respect to personnel additions, we have in the budget an additional school resource officer. We have four positions for fire and EMS for staffing the Reed Mountain Fire Station, 24-7 uh, coverage. That is to begin uh, the second half of FY21. In terms of public safety as well, there's an increase in juvenile detention center activity. And we have market-based compensation adjustments that are to be considered in the FY21 budget do, that are that have begun uh, in FY20. In terms of education, a $1 million increase in county funding to, to the schools and $1.4 million providing the county funding for school capital projects. Going forward, in terms of projected expenditures, uh, community development, maintaining community partnerships, and relationships, and contractual agreements, comprehensive plan updates. And this is continuing from this year. In terms of economic development, uh, points of emphasis more important now uh, at this time, certainly small business assistance and support, uh, business retention and expansion, AS 150 area redevelopment, greenfield development. Those are all continuing projects and performance agreements, uh, monitoring economic incentive up updates and results. Yeah. Again, uh, relating and following continuing projected expenditures, uh, what's included is county government accessibility and services for citizens and businesses. Um, two of the larger projects are the the first two bullets under that upkeep of county buildings, including the court of renovation, planning, and relocation of offices within Fincastle uh, to Greenfield Education and Training Center. Uh, there's some technology enhancements. Some are tied into the office's relocation. Some other larger projects that have to be we, we have to be concerned about is countywide portable radio replacement program planning for the replacement of the county radio system, and also uh, market-based compensation adjustments that are in their final phase. Next. In terms of the school budget, some of these are another highlight from the school's administration budget presentation uh, to the school board. Uh, an anticipated increase in funding from the state, 3.6%. Uh, Flat funding from federal and other sectors. Our budget includes 1.5 million in identified savings. And with respect to an additional 2.4 million of prioritized operation needs, uh, were specifically identified. As you can see there, there is 10 FTE positions and funding for step increases, salary studies, implementation, and administrative salary increase, increases. Increased spending for categorical and departmental priority spending. And uh, with this, um, school is planning to absorb an 8.5% insurance increase and utilize state funding and those insurance absorption to use to offset uh, $1.1 million or approximately 50% of the $2.4 million in operational needs identified. Next. In terms of uh, a summary, um, what this budget is seeking to do is to 
apply to strategic use of real estate reassessment funds, both in operational and capital project spending. Um, going through the budget process, uh, there was approximately $3.4 million reductions in operations in CIP from original request. We're providing for a 12% increase in debt service, planned debt service. Uh, the budget provides for additional accounting funding for schools, $2.4 million including CIP. And the budget attempts to reserve funds for significant future capital projects. With respect to the impact of COVID-19, um, we don't know the total extent of what the uh, impact is going to be, obviously. Uh, we'll begin to realize or get an idea in current for those revenue reductions uh, at the end of this month with respect to hotel and meals taxes. And by the end of the next month of May, so we can see what, what is going to happen with respect to our sales tax. Uh, revenues. So what we're going to be doing is actively analyzing the impact on these revenues. Uh, at this point in time, um, what was put in place by county administration at the outset of the emergency was hiring freeze, discretionary spending freeze, delaying large purchases, and reassessing the time of those capital expenses, suspension of travel, and uh, as mentioned, we are considering quarterly appropriations for the FY21 budget to control spending. And with that, we will be doing enhanced budget monitoring, watching revenues and expenditures as we begin the FY21 budget year. Next. Anticipated uh, calendar going forward. Um, next Tuesday, we seek to adopt tax rates. Uh, then in early May, um, we're going to invite the budget subcommittee to meet to assist in assessing current conditions and their future impact. May 12th, is scheduled to adopt the school budget. And then the months of May and June have update meetings as, as needed. And in terms of adopting the county budget, the plan is to do so on June 23rd, uh, 2020. With that, I thank you for, uh, for listening to the presentation. And I turn this back over to you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mrs. Rum. Uh, are there any questions or comments from the members of the board? Dr. Scott Horn? No, sir. Dr. Bailey? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I think I'm good. I, I, uh, I, I find that the calendar has been uh, modified so that we can try to take into consideration as many of the economic factors as possible. I would like to mention that, you know, it seems as though, and if anyone has uh, information about this, we will not know the results of the state budget uh, at any time uh, in the near future is my understanding. I'm sure they'll finish. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's, it's rather challenging to know where we are, I would think, without knowing that. And so our budget timeline may or may not accommodate some of that information, uh, but uh, because of state mandated timelines, uh, that, that'll just have to be uh, as it is. Anyone know anything different than that? Mr. Drella, do you know any different, anything any different? No, the only thing I know, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, the only thing that uh, is on schedule is uh, on, the, on, on the 22nd, the General Assembly will be meeting uh, to uh, discuss potential vetoes and budget amendments. And then I'm not sure how long they, they are scheduled to meet or might have to meet. Then that information will start to disseminating out to the localities. Uh, the, then we can begin, as, as Dr. Bailey mentioned, we begin to assess the impacts that the state budget will have uh, on Bob County. Thank you, Mr. Drell. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Ch
Mr. Doug Gilbert, is he in the room? Yes. Just back again. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you again. I, I was thinking, I, initially I was speaking on taxes and the budget, but uh, I, I'll echo what Mr. Riley said. Uh, this, these are tough times. Gonna take, uh, have to make some tough decisions. And I don't know who you'll be unpopular with, but I promise you, if you cut the taxes and you control the spending and get this down under control, you'll be very popular with me. And I know a lot of other people you'll be very popular with. And the voters will appreciate the sacrifices that are going to have to be made on their behalf. So I want to thank you in advance for looking after the citizenry of this county and, and getting the taxes under control and reducing them because everybody is suffering right now. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Gibbard. The next uh, speaker would be Mr. Larry Chola. Is Mr. Chola still here? Yeah. Larry, I didn't recognize you with that beard. <laughs> He's been hidden. <laughs> Larry Joel, 378 Gordon Road, Road, Pincastle. I only have one thing that I actually want to comment on that I was just really, I think kind of establishes the mindset and the vision of what the county has going forward, at least from what I see on this paper here. And uh, I really am amazed by it. And that's looking at the very last page of the capital development plan, which summarizes 2021 to 2025, how much money we have envisioned spending on capital improvements in Bontac County. $105 million in capital improvements. That's over $21 million per year. Just to even have that kind of vision or even think that we could even possibly go that way is amazing. How in the world can we even think about stuff like that. Who's sitting down dreaming up all these ways to spend money to the tune of $105 million by 2025? This is 2020 right now. It's just right down the road. You know, maybe I'm reading this wrong, but that's what I see out of it. And that's just, uh, it blew my mind when I saw that. But it, it, it does a lot to show where this government's mindset is and where this government wants to take by that county, whether the citizens want to go there or not, doesn't matter. It's what the administration and the board of supervisors and the people that do all the planning and plotting are planning. I don't know whether the comments are not. Good luck to you if you do. But uh, that's all the comment I have on this entire budget. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Hello, I apologize for coming out the second time. Carrie Martell, 729 Haven Road, in Castle. Um, just looking through this budget document, um, I mean, I've waited through some budget stuff earlier in preparation for my tax rate comments. And I, I'm a dumb person, but it's very difficult to understand. <laughs> but I do see the uh, projected salaries for county administrator. $429,518, up 63% from the year prior. Uh, Deputy County Administrator, $313,063, no change from the year prior. Treasurer, $294,176, up 7%. And Commissioner of the Revenue, $281,832, up 5%. I mean, why are public servants making six-figure plus salaries? This is why our property taxes are going up. In addition, people don't need to be getting rich serving the taxpayer. This, this is immoral. Thank you. Anyone else would like to speak in room 226? No, sir, that concludes. All right, do we have anyone waiting on the phone? If anybody has any comments, please press five star to raise your hand so we can unmute you. If you're on the telephone, please press five star. Five star. 
that the defense nobody has raised their hand to speak. Okay, if there's no one else to speak, then I'll close the public hearing. And next, we will open, open the public hearing for the proposed tax rates for the 2020 calendar year as advertised. And before making your comments, please state your name and your address. Uh, and again, uh, the comments will be heard first for those who are present here at Greenfield. If there's anyone who has comments, please go to room 226 and uh, share your comments with us. Thank you. 